Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here with an important legal update for all of our members. Everyone knows the Brewer decision from a couple of years ago has forever changed the legal landscape in the fight for the Second Amendment. You know, post Bruin, all governments have to show that their gun control laws, either existing or future, have an historical precedent as part of proving that that law is constitutional. And since, of course, there is very little historical precedent for gun control in our country, we have seen for a couple of years now a tremendous round of victories in blue states where current gun control laws are struck down, and in red states we're seeing pro-gun laws upheld on a regular basis. And anytime we get a victory, no matter what part of the country it's in, there's a precedential value that benefits everybody. And so I want to take a moment today and talk about one of these recent victories that happened just last week in California, because, again, whatever happens in one circuit court benefits all of us nationwide. So the background here is pretty simple. Everyone has traditionally assumed and believed that the Ninth Circuit was pretty much the, the land of fruits and nuts, judicially speaking. You know, crazy commies were always on the Ninth Circuit. Only bad decisions came from the Ninth Circuit. But that changed under President Trump. He put, I think it was 10 judges on the circuit court level and dozens and dozens in the federal district court level in the states that comprise the Ninth Circuit. And so just last week, the court was asked to consider California's one gun a month policy. I'm going to play some clips for you guys. It is going to make you die with laughter. These judges didn't just give a pro-gun decision. They gave an epic beatdown of the California Attorney General staff lawyer who was there trying to defend the case. You know, I've been involved in legal battles for gun owners in states ranging from New York State, from Manhattan, all the way out to Washington State. And ordinarily, when you're in the back of the court watching judges question the lawyers on both sides of a gun rights issue, there's usually one subject matter expert on the bench, or at least we hope there is a subject matter expert, and he or she does most of the talking. But this was a free-for-all, and all three judges on this panel just pummeled this attorney general staff lawyer with questions. It was a lot of fun to watch. You guys will really enjoy this. The background here is pretty straightforward. California enacted a one handgun a month law back in 1999. In 2019, that was amended to include semi-automatic uh, firearms or rifles in particular. And then in January of this year, 2024, it was changed again to all firearms. So now if you're in California, you can only get one gun a month, no matter what kind of firearm you're trying to buy. Of course, no one told the criminals who are immune from all this crap, so it only impedes law-abiding citizens who want firearms for self-defense. And so recently there was litigation filed in the courts asking for that law to be struck down. And in March of this year, District Court Judge William Hayes agreed. He said, yes, this law is unconstitutional, but he put a stay or a pause or a hold on his own order, leaving the law in place pending the appellate process. The problem is that the appellate process can take years and sometimes multiple years to play out. And so meantime, even though he said the law is unconstitutional, there is no relief for gun owners in California. And so there was an appeal mailed to the Ninth Circuit recently, and they asked them to override the stay on the lower court's uh, decision. And that decision was uh, granted in a two to one vote uh, again just a couple of days ago in the Ninth Circuit. And so I'm going to show you guys some of the clips. One of the main issues that comes up in talking about a one gun a month law is this is arbitrary. And arbitrariness is often cited as a reason to strike down a law because if it's constitutionally arbitrary, it's basically tyranny. If the government has the ability to say you can get one gun per 30 days, then why can't they say one gun per 10 years, as was the case in one of the questions. This, I believe, is Judge Bade, check out her questions to the state's staff attorney. Because I was wondering whether the source of the 30 days, it's, it, you know, is this an arbitrary number? Is it, would you have the same effect if it were every 10 days, if it were 15 days, if it were 45 days? How did, how did the state settle on 30, just following other statutes? Well, I, I think that that was a, a consideration for, for the legislature, but I think what, we're, what we want to, uh, what we're looking at here is whether or not 30 days is, a, is within the scope of the Second Amendment, and so, and whether or not uh, it, that is something that is presumptively protected. And in this case, it, the law doesn't limit the number of 
firearms that an individual can own. It just really controls the pace at which the, the firearms can, can be accumulated. Do you, um, and I agree with you, the, the, the way you put the question is, is correct. I was just curious about how the state had settled. Notice how he said that. We're not saying you can't have guns. We're just saying we want to control the pace at which you can get them. Yeah, that's just straight up tyranny. <laughs> that's not constitutional at all. That's what the King of England was doing back in the 1770s, trying to limit how much powder and how many muskets our forefathers could own. And so that was one of the first shots across the bow. But then Judge Owens, who was actually an Obama-appointed judge, came back with his own question uh, later on. And he said, if you're going to talk about um, this being a protected activity, the state has the right to limit how many guns you can buy per month. What about those who've never bought a gun at all? Doesn't that deny a core right of self-defense? Check this out. It's a pretty good clip. But getting back to the question that Judge Forrest asked, I'll change the hypothetical slightly. If I own a small liquor store, and a gang is saying, you know, we're going to get, if you don't pay us protection, we're going to get you. We're going to get you here or we're going to get you at your house, but we're going to get you. So I say, but boy, I better have a gun in my store. I need to have a gun in my house. And I don't have any firearms. Under the state of California's rule, I could buy a gun to protect my store or my house, but I couldn't buy one for each, correct? In th in, in, in a, and I had to, I'd have to wait 30 days. That's right, Your Honor. You would have to wait 30 days from when you purchased uh, a your first firearm to getting so getting with that understanding if the core uh, right the second amendment is trying to protect is self-defense then it seems to me that the law here is impeding that core right do you think this is i mean there are other ways you can you can attack uh straw purchasing and bundling guns i mean i, under, I understand the state's interest in that but in the hypothetical that judge forrest raised i mean that seems to be core bruin conduct the ability to defend yourself with a firearm either in your home or your place of work how do we get around that in this case, unless you can point us to a historical? The state's lawyer pretty much did a uh, 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 and had no real substantive answer from that because the judge makes a very good point. I mean, how can you sit there and tell somebody that you cannot get two guns in the first 30 days? What if you need two guns? You know, what if you have to have two guns for the defense? Why do we have to give a, a, a reason to the government ever for how many firearms we have? And so that was a really good uh, point made by Judge Owens. And the last clip for you features Judge Forrest. And she pretty much, in my opinion, gave a kill shot to the idea that this idea of limiting the frequency of how often we can exercise a constitutional right can apply to the Second Amendment, but not to other amendments. Check out her clip right here. Well, counsel, I mean, I just I'm, I'm I'm trying to understand sort of a fundamental premise here. The Supreme Court has said that for Second Amendment cases, we can look by analogy to other rights that citizens have, including First Amendment rights, et cetera. It would be absurd to think that a government could say, you can only buy one book a month because we want to make sure that you really understand the books that you read. Or you can only attend one protest a month because, you know, there are some societal drawbacks to having protests, and so we want to kind of space those out. People would say that's absurd. So if we conclude that you have a right to bear arms, and we conclude that that's not the right to bear an arm, but could be plural, like what is the, what is the basis in the law anywhere for the idea that you could say to someone, yes, you have this right, but we're going to control how frequently or how often you get to exercise it? <laughs> Just a total kill shot. The guy has no answer to that. Uh, the, the day went on like that for the next 15 minutes. It was just body shot one after the next, after the next. And what's amazing about this case is that ordinarily, after you have oral arguments on a case, you could wait for, again, for six months. You could wait for a year. You could wait for a year and a half. For example, right now, the Missouri Firearms Coalition has had oral arguments on their Second Amendment Preservation Act law way back in March of this year. It's been, uh, well, it's been, uh, three, four, six months now, and we have not heard anything back in Missouri on that case. In this case, though, this, this issue was so black and white, the very next day after they had oral arguments just last week, the Ninth, the ninth Circuit came back and said, nah, dude, you guys cannot do this. And they have ordered that the stay that Judge Hayes put in his decision back in March be reversed. And so right now, uh, any law-abiding person in California can buy as many firearms as they want 
with no worry about how often, uh, how many, how the frequency or how many guns they buy per day, per month, per year, per lifetime. It's a big win for gun owners in California. It's a big win for gun owners across the country uh, because you know, no matter what happens, we want to keep stacking up these wins. If President Trump wins in November, fantastic. We'll, we'll keep building on these wins in court for, for hopefully decades to come. But if, God forbid, somehow Kamala Harris wins in November, the more uh, pro-gun cases we can have decided now, it creates more roadblocks for the left to have to overcome as they try to attack our gun rights going uh, forward. Of course, this is why right now in Congress, the left is pushing legislation to expand the size of the Supreme Court, but also the district court uh, positions all across the country. They want to put 100 additional leftist commies on the district court judge um, um, circuit all across the country. And they want to add enough judges to the Supreme Court to outweigh the current conservative majority with a 7-6 Democrat majority, a 13-member Supreme Court. So the left is terrified about this because they're losing right now in court on a regular basis. Guys, that is the recap on this case, a major victory for gun rights. Guys, get involved in the fight today. We are fighting right now in court uh, in, at, for, for cases in blue states and red states all across the country fighting for gun rights. Get involved in the fight today. Hit the link below to join or donate and get involved. Guys, more information coming soon, but celebrate this victory. It's a big one for everybody in California, and it's a big one for all of us as well.